You know, I've been really struggling to decide which garbage movie to tackle next. I have Vampire Academy lined up for October. I've been watching a lot of highly requested movies only to decide I don't care to talk about them and there are plenty of lesser known films that I've thought about reviewing but worry I won't be interested in. I've been having YouTubers block basically. That was until Netflix handed me Tall Girl on the silver platter of universal Twitter mockery. Seriously, there has never been a more perfect candidate for this series. Objectively silly? Check. Controversial? Check. A teen rom-com? Check. It's a gold mine. I said I need content and Netflix said anything for you, Julia. I've been living on cloud nine since the trailer blew up on Twitter, but I have run into a problem, which is that I feel kind of guilty because I've been watching a lot of cast interviews and have wound up finding out that Ava Michelle actually does have a rough history being tall. Ava, stand next to Chloe. Who does this to their kid? Ava, you're too tall for us today. You're cut. Thank you. You can go. Is that clear enough for you? Thank you for this opportunity. It's about all the things that Abby has not only said to me. Your kid's arms are horrendous. They're like gargantuan. She looks like a praying mantis. Definitely, I have actually been, sorry. I've it's okay, it's okay. been kicked off a team because I was too tall and, sorry. It's okay, sorry. Um, it I've been attacked a lot on social media. When this movie came about, I was like, finally, we can tell the story of what tall people actually go through. Were you bullied as a kid for being tall? I was bullied like crazy. It's insane. You know, when the trailer came out and everybody was like, who's bullied about their height? That's not a thing. And it really is. So upon seeing all that, I was spiraling because the last thing I want to do is mock the hardships that tall people might go through. You know, is being tall just as much a hindrance on life as being LGBTQ, a person of color, or in the Glee Club? Because you're all minorities. You're in the Glee Club. Obviously, I'm kidding, but I was actually worried that I was being ignorant about the tall folk bullying epidemic until I remembered that I'm tall. That's right, I'm a tall girl. Well, not that tall. Like, taller than most girls, but shorter than some girls. I'm 5'9", I should have just said I'm 5'9". Which, to be fair, is still four inches shorter than Jody. so I guess I can't speak to the life of a six-foot girl, but luckily, I do have a giant sister who can. Hello? Hi. How's the weather Hi. up there? Oh. <laughs> We're tall girls. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you would guess it or not. I'm trying. I wanted to ask you about tall girl because you're the tallest person I know. Well, not the tallest person. Tallest girl I know. I'm a tall girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How tall are you exactly? You're six feet, right? Yeah. I'm recording this right now, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you been bullied for being tall? No. Has anybody ever, like, just rent, like, a stranger, like, in the hallway, come up to you and been like, how's the weather up there? No. <laughs> like, it was so unrelatable. <laughs> did you watch it? <laughs> yeah. And what'd you think? Oh, stupid. <laughs> like, like, I'm sure people can be insecure about their height, but, like, I've never been insecure about being tall. Like, isn't the biggest thing that people just tell you that you should play basketball? Yeah basketball and volleyball and then like well it's weird because i was i i guess the big problem is trying to find guys to date but like you dated cameron and now you're married so i guess that yeah. wasn't a problem <laughs> for you so you would just as a tall person who's like nearly the same height as the girl in the movie you would say that it was nowhere near that much of a hindrance on your life no your parents didn't try to stunt your growth <laughs> no. Okay, I guess that's all I wanted to know. So the opinion of these two tall girls is that being tall is not that big of a deal? And I know that we're not the only tall girls and that surely there are people out there who have had a rougher time than us like Ava Michelle. The thing is that there's a difference between being tall in Hollywood and on a show designed to bully young dancers for entertainment and being tall in like high school. Now there are also a lot of people saying that they've been bullied for being tall in high school, but I can guarantee that whatever that experience is like is not what's portrayed in Tall Girl. Tall Girl is very silly and unrealistic. I mean, I think it would have been possible to make a movie about the insecurities of a tall girl. This movie just failed at that. We can get into what I mean by that when we get into the plot, which should probably be right now. No better time than the present. Let's go. Plot time. 
So our main character, Jody, is reading in a bizarre color-coded library when this guy starts making eyes in her direction. He starts up a conversation about the book he's reading. What's the big deal with this book anyway? Alienation. It's about Ignatius trying to find acceptance in a world that wants nothing to do with him. And it's heavy-handed, but it's also the first example of this film's completely unself-aware melodrama. I mean, alienation? <laughs> Trying to find acceptance in a world that wants nothing to do with you? Calm down, Jody. you're just tall. Let's call that my official reaction to most of what happens in this movie. Calm down, Jody. you're just tall. Anyway, it seems the flirtation has been successful because this nameless love interest almost asks her out. That is, until he notices that she's a human monster and must cower in fear. Now, this sort of thing almost made me think that the movie was being satirical and that it understood how ridiculous it is. Like, I'm sure the director and writer aren't under the impression that this is a realistic scenario, but the whole movie takes itself seriously enough that you can't write it off as exaggerated. It's hard to tell what they thought was an accurate portrayal of tall life and what was just for kicks and giggles. Anyway, enter narration. You know that really, really, really tall girl that you go to school with? The one that people call LeBron, Skyscraper, Daddy Long Legs. Well, I do know the tall girl I went to school with, Jamie, but she was never called Daddy Long Legs, LeBron, or Skyscraper, so actually no, Jody, I have no idea what you're talking about. I read that uh, Diatha's still best role is very effective in stunting a child's growth. I know this bit was a joke, right? But her dad's obsession with her height was one of the most annoying things about the movie for me. Like, are we really pretending that this girl is not only constantly and viciously bullied at school, but at home over her height? The melodrama, guys, the melodrama. <laughs> trying to get through the day with as few people as possible asking me, well, how's the weather up there? <laughs> as we've already established, this is not something real humans say unironically to each other ever. I've only ever heard this phrase used between friends as a joke. For Jody to be told this something like every two seconds by complete strangers is so bizarre. And I don't think that they knew that, which is bewildering. You think your life is hard? I'm a high school junior wearing size 13 Nikes. Men's. Ah, uh, there it is. You're a minority? <laughs> Family problems? Whatever. Financial struggle? Please. Living in a war-torn country? Could be worse. I, Jody, am thin, white, traditionally pretty, rich, sought after by at least four different dudes, but sometimes people ask me how the weather is up here. I wear big shoes. You haven't known the triumphs and defeats, the epic highs and lows of being tall, for a girl. This is where I think Tall Girl went really, really wrong. Like I said, a movie called Tall Girl about the insecurities of a tall girl could have been released unscathed if they had gone about it differently. First of all, cut it out with the melodrama. Nobody can tell if you're being serious or not. Keep the exaggerated camera angles only to display the way she sees herself versus the way the world sees her, that being normal. Speaking of, scrap the bullying. Keep a little bit of passive aggressive comments, do away with whatever this is. And finally, make it obvious that you know that being tall isn't the worst thing. Maybe don't straight up tell your audience that all other problems are obsolete compared to height. It's not inherently wrong to explore problems in characters that maybe aren't pushing boundaries or all that serious, but they took a problem like that and then pretended like it was pushing boundaries and like it was really serious. If they had just owned the fact that tallness is a privileged insecurity, then they probably wouldn't be catching so much heat. Basically what I'm saying is gather some self-awareness, please. Just scrape a little bit of self-awareness out of the bottom of the barrel, I beg you. Anyway, right after Jodi proclaims that being tall is the hardest possible thing to be, we're introduced to her black friend. Seriously? Nobody? Stopped to think about the irony here. The next people we get to know are Jody's family. Sabrina Carpenter, her pageant queen sister with allergies and the two worst parents ever known to man. I mean, what adversity did you face exactly? Well, I was not popular with the girls in my class because I was so beautiful. How didn't they realize that the same way Angela sounds stupid here is the way Jody sounds stupid throughout the whole movie? It's almost enough to make you believe it's a subtle satire. Like this whole movie was just a very subtle and clever way to display the way that privileged people will come up with a reason to be marginalized. But I'm pretty sure it isn't that, so I just have to assume they were that clueless. Anyway, does being tall even 
almost count as adversity? Or is it just a basic human attribute that at least a third of the population can relate to? Calm down, Jody. you're just tall. <laughs> Next, we meet Jack the Short King, her friend who relentlessly hits on her. So David Blaine called me? <laughs> you'll never believe it. He just wants to know when you and I are gonna make magic together. At first, you'll think this is just comedic relief, but near the end of the movie, they'll suddenly expect you to ship them. Also, he carries his books in a milk crate for a very goofy reason that we'll dive into later. And walks Stieg Mullen, Swedish foreign exchange student who is tall, hot, and can do math. Also, he is staying with Jack the Short King. So obviously, Jody is in love with him, but not so fast her bully, Kimmy, might just get to him first. By that, I mean she does. So we're treated to a couple flashbacks of Kimmy's toughest blows, like, Look, guys, Jody's hand is so big, it doesn't even fit on the clay. Nice sweatpants, Sasquatch. <laughs> and my personal favorite, and that's why I want to be just like Taylor Swift when I grow up. Taylor Swift? More like Taller Swift. <laughs> now that we know everybody and we're only 10 minutes in, I'll spare you some of the details. For a long time, it's just a bunch of haha -ha funny scenes that I have absolutely nothing to say about. Some things of note, Jody asks Sabrina Carpenter to help her get at Stieg. Hey bro, do you want this or not? Jack the Short King gets involved in a flirtation ship with this girl in glasses who I don't have the brain power to name. And finally, we've arrived at one of the most iconic moments from the trailer in which Kimmy and her henchman Schnipper prank call Jack. I don't know many people at school, and you seem like a really nice person. I was hoping if you didn't have a date yet, you'd want to go with me to the homecoming test. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm guessing that Dunkelman gave you my number? <laughs> no, no. I just looked it up in the phone book under Big Ugly Giraffe. <laughs> you really don't think a guy as hot as Steve would be into you, do you? I mean, let's face it, Jody. you're the tall girl. You'll never be the pretty girl. This is the scene that makes it really obvious the way they overstate just how much anyone cares how tall you are. Snarky comments in the hallway, I don't buy it, but okay. A bully calling you tall or swift, I don't know about that, but I guess nobody said movies have to be realistic. Someone acting like it's obvious that nobody will ever love you because you're less than a foot taller than the national height average for women. No, I can't be watching this. This can't be happening. We need to launch a full-scale federal investigation as to how and why this happened, who allowed this? The prank bumps her out enough that she cancels the makeover her mom and sister gave her and hides in the bathroom instead. Also, in an effort to avoid her pranksters, stumbles into a room alone with Steve. And what do you know? The story has arrived, which is basically just a love triangle. Then again, you don't realize that Jack the Short King is a real option until the tail end of this thing, so maybe the story hasn't arrived yet? Anyway, Steve is playing the piano, and for a split second, I was sure that he was playing Welcome to the Black Parade. Tell me you don't hear it. <laughs> Unfortunately though, he's not. He's just sucking at piano. I suck. Don't worry though, Jody is about to give him life-changing advice. Relax your hands. You heard it here first, folks. All it takes to go from this to this is relaxing your hands on command. Then they start serenading each other deeply, which is maybe just a little bit much for your first encounter. So please forgive. Troy and Gabriella can pull that off, guys. It's not long before they're interrupted, though, by Kimmy, who is now officially Stig's girlfriend. Girlfriend. Had the talk last night, made it a fish. All she really does is call Jody a beanstalk and leave. What are you playing at, beanstalk? Oh, how I love realistic depictions of female bullies. This is exactly the way human girls act. When Jody gets home, she finds that her terrible, terrible, terrible parents have invited over a tall people club, which I guess is a real thing. I don't know. I don't have the time to unpack all that. Either way, the scene is a whole lot of annoying. The idea that this girl's height has become an all-consuming factor in her life and nothing she says or does is unrelated to her height is so strange. Like maybe if she were a bizarre seven feet or something, it would make sense for her family to have called in this tall club to make her feel normal. But we've all met a six foot girl before. That's why it's so easy to make fun of this thing. Like, calm down, movie. She's just a little tall. <laughs> After looking up height reduction surgery, she gets another phone call from Stieg, but this time it actually is Stieg. She doesn't know that, though. The next time I see you, I'm gonna take my size 13 Nikes, and I'm gonna kick you in the nards. I had to look up what nards meant, and then I had to look up what the Himalayan spike nard meant, only to realize that was not what she was talking about, and the answer was on Urban Dictionary all along. Anyway, I think we should delete the term nards 
Menards, if that's something people actually say, I do not like that at all. It's after she threatens to kick him in the Nards though that she agrees to watch a musical with him alone. Later in the night, they're going to kiss and therefore cheat on his girlfriend, but they know that's wrong and it's resolved in the end, so whatever. I've kissed a guy who I knew had a girlfriend. But I am confused as to why they act like it was a spur of the moment mistake. I wasn't planning on kissing another girl's boyfriend. I mean, even if that girl is Kimmy. She kissed me and I kissed her back and I I didn't pull away. Despite literally planning this date together, like were they not both under the impression that this was a romantic outing? Because I'm almost certain that they were. So because Jody and Steve shared a romantic night, she expects that he'll be friendly with her the next day. However, that's not the case because Jack convinces him that he should stick with Kimmy. You know, if you keep that up, you're in line to be homecoming king. Now, as you might have noticed, this is manipulative and possessive behavior, and the movie acknowledges this. I am your friend. But if you can't have me, nobody can. Is it that oh, the idea? My Jody. But it won't hinder the fact that he ends up with Jody at all. Spoiler alert, he ends up with Jody, which is why it's hard for me to understand why they set up a perfectly good romance between him and Glasses Girl. I don't know about you, but I anticipated a happy ending between Jody and Stieg because that's the romance the whole movie is spent building. I actually love the idea that she would end up with the short guy as opposed to the tall one. Short King's Rise, you know? I just wish that they would have spent more than two seconds taking their relationship seriously. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Back to lunch, I feel the need to point out that they made Jack reenact the idiot sandwich thing. What are you? I don't know! An idiot sandwich! <laughs> Only because I thought it was stupid and I really don't have much else to say about it. I've skipped over a lot of the dumb jokes in this thing because there are too many to point out and this movie being unfunny is the least of its worries. This one though, it really got to me. You know how I feel about movies trying a little bit too hard to be hip with the teens. <coughs> So blah blah blah, it's revealed that Henchman Schnipper has a crush on Jody and wants her to come to an escape room with the popular crowd. This crush doesn't amount to anything, but it is noteworthy that he is the fourth guy in this movie to show interest in Jody. I know the first one turned away because of her height, but one out of four is not a bad ratio. The one and only realistic struggle tall girls go through is worrying that boys won't like her because of her height. However, it doesn't seem like Jody has any trouble at all. In fact, every single male character in this movie movie aside from her dad wants a piece of that. I feel so bad for you, Jody. I thought my life was hard, but you, you have it so much worse. I mean, what's having friends and being wealthy and being desired and talented when, you know, you um, wear size 13 shoes? Anyway, she wants to go to the escape room to win the affection of Stieg and her gal pal is not happy about that, so they fight. You know, if you're not gonna have my back, I would really just prefer you keep your opinions to yourself. Don't worry. I will. I'm kind of tired of movies making the main character fight with their best friend near the end, even when it doesn't affect the story or the theme at all, and just like, because that's what you do. They don't even give these two a proper makeup scene, just like an appreciative nod and hug in the end. The escape room isn't all that interesting. It's mostly just a chance for them to shove all the characters in a room together and explore the love octagon they've set up. Or maybe saying that they've set it up is generous, but we'll get into that. Quick summary of the next 20 minutes. Stieg tells Joe that he'll break up with Kimmy for her. She invites him to her sister's pageant, but what do you know? He doesn't show. Which causes Sabrina Carpenter to do this in the middle of answering her question. Which... Which is- Don't worry though, she still wins anyway, despite not following the first unspoken rule of being on stage at any event ever, which is not to mouth things to your sister in the audience. Then Jody shows up at the party Stieg and Jack are throwing to break things off for good. Jody, why would you say that? Because you like being the popular guy much more than you like me. Meanwhile, Jack is dumping Glasses Girl for Jody, even though she's never displayed any interest in him. So I- Aren't you guys together? Um. <laughs> because she doesn't like you. Well, actually she does, but she's never given you or the audience a reason to think that and she won't until a couple scenes from now. If I didn't fully realize that he and Jody would end up together, then I was absolutely sure when he showed up at her house the next morning with size 13 heels and sudden love interest editing. Also, Glasses Girl sends Jody a video of Jack and Steak fighting after she left the party. I, I messed with her. Yeah, Kimmy, I messed with her and, and she was pissed at me. Right, 
So anyways, I couldn't get her to leave, so... Just to get her off my back, I said, yeah, I'll meet up with you tonight. We can talk more about it. But, uh, but I, I totally stood her up. What's your problem, man? You are, man! So despite everything we've seen so far, Jack is now a very serious love interest and Stieg is a mean bad guy. All 10 minutes before the credits roll. And you know, on second viewing, I can see the way they tried to build this up. Like, Stieg is obsessed with popularity and he does choose it over Jody once before this. And Jack has been in the background, like, being in love with her the whole time. It just feels misleading because I never took any of that seriously. They were all comedic scenes and everything about the editing and music and just how much time they spent on Stieg led me to believe that that was the romance. Let me know if any of you watched it and like knew it was Dunkelman from the start because I just didn't. Maybe it's on me and not the movie. Maybe I'm just stupid. I know I didn't see it coming is a weird critique to bring up because generally predictability is considered a bad thing. I've always thought though that the rule changes when it comes to romance. People want to know who to root for. Chances are if you've led me to believe that X and Y will end up together, then they are the more developed couple. Like here, Stieg and Jody are the more developed couple because she hasn't had a real romantic moment with Jack until now. There are a lot of stories in which the characters don't end up together that are better for it, but all of them are smart and complicated. Tall Girl is a simple movie that deserved nothing more than a simple conclusion. The thing about couples not ending up together in movies is that it's usually not even shocking, like it's usually pretty well led up to and more about the lesson and theme of the thing. Like, romance isn't the place for shock value and plot twists. It's a place for character work, you know what I mean? I have just one more thing to say about the fight scene, which is that I don't buy that Jodi is the best ever, okay? I mean, Jodi has so much to offer. She's the best person that I know. I've been watching her a while now and it sure seems like all she does all the time is complain. She's a huge downer. Like her best friend is always just like trying to dance and like live her best life and Jody never stops talking about the fact that she's tall and she's sad about it. Just trying to start my next class off on a high note. Well, I start every class off on a high note. Wow. I don't need to give people another reason to look at me. Dating a guy who's shorter than me would just draw more attention to how much of a freak I am. Why couldn't I have just been normal? Happy endings that only happen in movies with actresses that are under six feet. Yeah, well, me not getting the guy was always how it was supposed to end. Why does your height have to be all consuming for you and everyone around you? Jody sucks. <laughs> Jodi decides that she loves herself now and puts on her makeover outfit from earlier to go to homecoming. I just love that the implication of this is that she planned to wear that outfit to school because that would have been ridiculous. Anyway, then unprompted, she walks onto the stage to give a speech about how she's tall and it's hilarious. Can I uh, have everyone's attention? You may know me as Amazon or Godzilla or Jodi the Green Giant or <laughs> those other insults that you've called me in the past years. Um, being tall actually is what makes me me, and I, I, I like me, and you should like you. So go ahead and, and keep making fun of me, keep calling me names, keep asking me how's the weather up there, because I can take it. Because the weather up here, it's, it's pretty great. First of all, you can't just waltz onto stage at homecoming and expect they'll turn the music off for you and listen. Second of all, why would you want to? Like, fine, she's learned the lesson of self-acceptance, but is that something she'd really want to give a speech about that nobody asked for? I mean, seriously imagine how weird it would be if at a school dance, some girl got on stage and got all reflective about her height. I'm not sure the response would be so overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, Jodi! That sort of thing only works when a character has a reason to be speaking on stage and the subject matter is more general and they're giving advice to their audience as opposed to like, hey guys, I wanna talk about the fact that I'm tall and now I'm okay with that. Whatever, Stieg wants her back, but she says, no thanks, I love a short king and goes to kiss up on Jack. That's when we find out that he's apparently been carrying his books in a milk crate so that he could stand on it to kiss her one day. Now, I don't like this for a few reasons. First of all, if somebody 
somebody tells you they're not interested, don't bank on them eventually changing their mind. That's bad for everybody, but oh well, I can get over that. What I can't get over is that this is a very flawed plan. I mean, what makes you think that your first kiss will be at school? It wasn't, by the way. Lucky that you happened to be sitting on the porch with it. And I know that you don't carry it around everywhere with your wallet and keys or something because I've seen you outside of school without it. Sir, did you think that you'd start making out in the cafeteria or in science class? Aside from that, I would like to point out that this is a very awkward kiss. Why isn't she doing anything with this arm? Why is he holding her so awkwardly high on her side? Why don't they move their heads at all? Why are they leaving so much room for Jesus? In real life, kisses are allowed to be awkward, but this is your big finale kiss movie, Try Harder. Anyway, that's the end. That's why I don't like tall girl. Goodbye. <laughs>